Germany, from LA to New York, New York Chicago to Mississippi, Mississippi. Let's give it up for America's number one fighting world. What up, what up, what up, y'all? It's your boy Rodney Perry. You're doing it in Rodney Perry Live. The show is incredible. You know it. I know it. That's how we're getting it out today. Now, the man to my right in the building. That's me. Mr. Cole Parker. Um, Cole, one of my, my closest and dearest friends, man. Really always like to have him come in and rock out with me. You'll be seeing him from time to time whenever he got time. I make time. Fitting, fitting my schedule. <laughs> and and, and, and you, got, you got a podcast that's about to jump off. Absolutely. And... Your business, man, Divas in Defense. Always rocking for Divas, man. Well, or, well, you know what? We're going to talk about that a little bit later. We'll I get really it. into it. But I got my man on the line, dog. Who on the line? Bone Hampton. Bone on the line? Fabulous comedian. You got to be kidding me. Yeah, man. What's up, B? What up? What up, fellas? The two, the <laughs> coolest two fellas in the A. Marvin well, Hunter, I'm sorry. Cold, just a little bit colder than you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you know uh, Hold on, let me, let me give you a proper intro first, Bone. Right, you jump your proper in. intro. Um, this dude is is a lot of things. He's a comedian. He's the absolute best father yes. of all time. Definitely got I mean, here. he's way better father than I am. I hate to admit it also. Dude, and <laughs> anyway, uh, he, he's a comedian. He's a father. He's a spiritual leader. And he's the homie. And he's one of the coolest guys in the game, Mr. Bonehampton. What's up, dog? Man, what's going on, man? It's a pleasure to be here with the two cool dudes. In the <laughs> well, you know, he's a borderline deacon dad. He is a deacon he dad. Deacon dad. Deacon, deacon dad. <laughs> and where are you at in the world right now? Man, I'm up here in Nashville, man. I'm up here, you know, putting work in, trying to get ready for my podcast as well. Okay. Hey man, uh, you you've been uh, in this pod space, this radio space for some time. Any pointers for you, boy? Man, uh, just if you feel it, do it. That's the, that's the coolest thing. You know, you 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 sitting there, you kind of feel like you're in a vacuum, but whatever you do, that's always working. It's gonna work on there too. Wow, that's dope. Hey man, um, you have lived in the comedy world for many years. How many years is it, man? Man, I'm coming up on 20, man. Oh, really? It, it's got to be more than 20, Bone. Bone, I know you're trying to stay young. <laughs> Bone be killing me. Bone, it's got to be more than 20. I've been knowing hey, you more than 20. He I said himself. I'm coming up on 20. <laughs> Just leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> you, man, know what? Me, uh, you know what? Uh, I made my first TV appearance in 99. Wow. Okay, so that's I'm 21. Not, that's 21, right. He's... He's already adding to the math. So so we in 20. 20 snuck up on me. I guess I'm on 21 years. You're on 21 right, years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so man, um, talk to me about about um comedy and what it is for you, man. You've been making a living at comedy for two decades. That's that's a, that's a huge commitment. Man, you know, comedy is the place where you get to you get to be in control of what the temperature of the room is. And that, that's a lot, man, because you're on stage and what's coming out your mouth is going to control how everybody's feeling in the room. And to be able to make everybody feel better than they did before they came in the room, that's just, that's huge. That's that's a lot of control. And it's it's, it's a lot of a lot of control that that is used in a good way. When you're watching people sometimes coming in there, you don't know what they done been through, but then you're watching them laugh and you're watching them just chuckle and having a good time. And then you find out afterwards, hey, man, I just came back from a friend of mine's wait. I really appreciate you putting me in the right. better mood. Wow. Hey, man, I just, you know, I just found out, man, if I don't come up with this money, they're going to kick me and my family out. Thank you. They told me, me that last business. week. <laughs> Hello, same family. Hello. Hello. So, man, it's fun. It's a way to, you know, try to get your point out, try to get people to see things a different way. Because laughter always lets people break their walls down so you can tell people something that you can't tell them when you're mad at them. Right. Well, you know, com black, black comedy is mad, though. Black, black right. comedy is pain and anger. So we are talking mad and anger. 
You come out on the black stage too happy, you might not make it. <laughs> and you got a unique perspective of, of speaking of black comedy, of, of knowing the nuance, what that is, black comedy versus uh, mainstream and or white comedy. Uh, talk to me about what the difference is. What are the nuances? Man, I always say a white club will let you tell a joke. Mm. Black club, if they sniff out, it's a joke. You about to be in trouble. <laughs> You know, at a white club, you can come out there and say, hey, I was walking on Mars the other day. And they're like, oh, it's a joke. Okay. Right. You better not come out in no black club talking about, hey, I was on Mars the other day. Man, you wasn't on no, no Mars. Stop <laughs> lying. It's like you got to make it sound like you just talking and you happen to be funny. And that's what makes uh, being a black comic a lot stronger, in my opinion, because you have – you have strong bits. It's a bit. It's something you don't worked out, but you really have to sell it as it's just a thought that you have. Wow. And we always we always trip on it. Mike Epps is one of the kings of just making you think it's off the top of his head until you've seen him five times. Yeah, very true. <laughs> hey, Cole, you got anything for Bone? No, nah, man, Bone is an amazing dude, man. Best of luck on the radio show, podcast, all that, brother. I, I can't wait to see all you're going to do. Cole, thank you, man. It's always good to see you, man. Always, always a pleasure, man. <laughs> Hey, 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 Bone, let me ask you this, man. Um, you're a comedian. We know that. Uh, and what I what I love about you is that you are deliberately in the in the church space. But yeah. you don't sacrifice your funny to be in that space. Like, how is it how is that you are able to do that this many years? Well, I believe that if no matter what kind of comedy you're doing, you should you should do comedy in all rooms and see what part of you connects with every different room. You know, we always say as comics, you know, funny is funny, but sometimes the content of where you're coming from might not be relatable. Well, then it's your job to figure out how to tell tell that part of you that's funny to a group of people that may not be the went through what you went through. And so, for me as a Christian comic, my job is to not make the ring not make the room feel judged make the room feel like hey man it's just what i'm doing in my life but i'm not trying to make you feel like you're wrong for doing it in your life so i used to do a joke about uh you know i want uh when i get married i want to be married forever and it worked it kills in the church because that's what everybody in the church trying to do and one time i was at the ice house dude slammed his drink He's like man what the f you want to do that for <laughs> Like, oh, oh, you know what? I'm a Christian and I'm tired of having sex and having the Lord mad at me the next day. That's why I want to do it. And he looked at me like, oh, okay, that's you. That's how you trying to do it. It's uh, personal it now. It's personal. Realize, right. You know, I need, I, I have to let you know where I'm coming from so you can be like, oh, that's your path. But you're not telling me that got to be my path. Right. Have you ever tried to do like a Jewish room and see if you can kill that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the no, the, hey, the, hey, the, the hey, 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 Ball, I know you got your finger on the pulse of the Christian world. Kurt Franklin recently uh, came out. Well, not came out, but uh, he, uh, <laughs> it's almost that time, though. Is it New Year, I'm not, New Me? I'm not doing this with you. New Year, New Me. So, wait. <laughs> so, Kurt Franklin was getting one of those awards, I think a Dove Award. Dove Awards, yeah. Dove Award, and Dove is the Christian Grammys. Dub is the Christian Grammys. Okay. And they, they had a war for him, and he, he used the platform to say something political. Uh. And they end up cutting it out. Uh, long story short, it got to the point where they cut it out, and he's like, dude, why y'all cut it out? And they're like, oh, we didn't mean to. Don't worry about it. We, we'll fix it. You know. Right. And so he, the next time, <laughs> he got another war. <laughs> Yeah. They cut it out again. Oh. Yeah. And so now he's taking a stand. Do you think that stand is going to stay packed? Uh, is, is Kurt Franklin going to stay uh, um, firm on his decision not to mess with the uh, that part of the gospel world? Or it's not that's not gospel. That's Christian. That's Christian. Uh, yeah. 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 I was a mixture. Well, would you say well, it's well, a well, mixture. Well, hold on. Give us the difference first, Bob. Right. I, I know a lot of people don't understand the difference between black Christians and white Christians. Give it to me. All right. So in the music world, the white Christian world, white folks call they 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 Christian music, Christian music. And in the black gospel world, we call it black gospel music. 
which is basically just a nice way of not having to say black and white all the time. Like Army so black white. is gospel yeah. and Christian is white. It's white. Understood. So so the Doves is more of a Christian award show, but they've been decent about being inclusive of inclu including the black right. gospel. So Kirk won gospel artist of the year both times he won an award. And he was just making a, a plea to the Christian world. I mean, and when I say Christian world, not black and white, but just the whole entire gospel Christian world of let's do better. And he and he acknowledged the, you know, the the wrongful killings of an innocent black man, unarmed black man. And that's what they didn't air. And he was like, no, nah, man, there's no reason for y'all not to air that. And they really didn't have a good reason for it. And that's what made him get to the point where he's like, no, nah, man, I'm just going to boycott because y'all say y'all want to do better, but y'all not really trying to do better. So the question you asked me, if I think it'll stick, I really don't know. I would like for it to stick so it could be some changes, but I, I don't know, man. It's just, uh, I don't know because, you know, the one of the worst things being in the body of Christ that we can have is the is the divisiveness because, you know, we get divided and we're supposed to be the people coming with love. Then it's hard to be an example of how we all supposed to be coming together. But if you know the church broke, if you know that it's, it's wrong dealings going on in the, in, in the church, you're supposed to do something. You're supposed to stand up. You're supposed to not let the wrong dealings continue to go. And if it's anybody in this gospel world that can make a stand to make a change, it is Kirk Franklin. Hey, man, you broke it down. Hey, bro, I can't wow. thank you enough for coming on. How do people find you, man? Bonehampton.com. And then you can go to all my social media from there. Catch my podcast, Bonehampton Loud and Country Podcast. Everything stems from Bonehampton.com. Hey, I love it, man. Bonehampton.com. That's the man, the myth, the legend. His name is Bonehampton. Uh, he had a heart attack. I had a stroke. We both still walk around. I might be the healthy friend. We, we hope <laughs> <laughs> Mine might be finite. I don't want to get in the finite bucket. You know, I'd be in good down with measles. All I can say, oh, measles me took me out. Don't do that. <laughs> get a different like, you, heard, you, heard Cole, you heard Cole got rickets? <laughs> rickets. Cole, Cole got rickets. <laughs> and it's Man, take, about taking him out. Polio. Yeah. You know Cole got polio? Jaundice. <laughs> different <theory. laughs> If Cole got polio, jeans is about to come back soon. <laughs> I got more polo than Cole anything. got the bubonic plague. <laughs> no. <laughs> bird flu. That's yeah, about that's not the, the bird, bird flu. flu. I, I don't see me getting it. I don't hey, eat it. Hey, hey, you know what? Salmonella. I mean, I don't I don't eat it. You do not. <laughs> hey, that's my man Bone Hampton. Thank you for calling in, Bone. Hey, hey y'all, we're gonna take a break. We we'll come back. Uh more with this fool right here, man. It's Roddy Pray. You right. Roddy Pray a lot. You are always doing something, bro. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, from LA to New York, New York New Chicago, Chicago to Boston, Mississippi, Mississippi, let's give it up for America's number one funny man. What up, what up, what up, y'all? It's your boy Rodney Perry. You're doing it in the Rodney Perry Live. The show is incredible. You know it. I know it. That's how we're getting it down today. Now, the man to my right in the building. That's me. Mr. Cole Parker. Um, Cole, one of my, my closest and dearest friends, man. Really always like to have him come in and rock out with me. You'll be seeing him from time to time whenever he got time. I'll make time. Fitting, fitting my schedule. <laughs> and and, and, and you, got, you got a podcast that's about to jump off. Absolutely. And 
your business, man. Divas in Defense. Always rocking for Divas, man. Well, or, well, you know what? We're going to talk about that a little bit later. We'll I get really it. into it. But I got my man on the line, dog. Who on the line? Bone Hampton. Bone on the line? Fabulous comedian. You got to be kidding me. Yeah, man. What's up, B? What up? What up, fellas? The two, the <laughs> coolest two fellas in the eight. Marvin what? Hunter, I'm sorry. Cold, just a little bit colder than you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But uh, you know hold, what? On, hold on. Let me, let me give you a proper intro first, Bone. Right. You give me a proper right. intro. Right. Um... <laughs> This dude is is a lot of things. He's a comedian. He's the absolute best father yes. of all time. Definitely got I mean, here. He's way better father than I am. I hate to admit it also. Dude, and <laughs> anyway, uh he he's a comedian, he's a father, he's a spiritual leader, and he's the homie, and he's one of the coolest guys in the game. Mr. Bonehampton. What's up, dog? Man, what's going on, man? It's a pleasure to be here with the two cool dudes in the <laughs> Well, you know, he was born like Deacon Dad. He is a Deacon Dad. Deacon Dad. Deacon Dad. Deacon Dad. Deacon Dad. Hey, Dad. Where you at in the world right now? Man, I'm up here in Nashville, man. I'm up here, you know, putting work in, trying to get ready for my podcast as well. Hey, man, um, you, you've been uh, in this pod space, this radio space for some time. Any pointers for you, boy? Man, uh, just if you feel it, do it. That's the, that's the coolest thing. You know, you, you you sitting there, you kind of feel like you're in a vacuum, but whatever you do that's always working, it's going to work on there too. Wow, that's dope. Hey, man, um, you have lived in the comedy world for many years. How many years is it, man? Man, I'm coming up on 20, man. Oh, really? It, it's got to be more than 20, Bone. Bone, I know you're trying to stay young. <laughs> Bone be killing me. Bone, it's got to be more than 20. I've been knowing hey, you man. more than 20. He about I to said himself. I'm coming up on 20. <laughs> Just leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> you, man, know what? Me, uh, you know what? Uh, I made my first TV appearance in 99. Wow. Okay, so that's I'm 21. That's 21, right. He's, he's already adding to the math. So, so we in 20. 20 snuck up on me. I guess I'm on 21 years. You're on 21 right, years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so man, um, talk to me about about um, comedy and what it is for you, man. You've been making a living at comedy for two decades. That's, that's, that's a huge commitment. Man, you know, comedy is the place where you get to, you get to be in control of what the temperature of the room is. And that, that's a lot, man, because you're on stage and what's coming out your mouth is going to control how everybody's feeling in the room. And to be able to make everybody feel better than they did before they came in the room, that's just, that's huge. That's, that's a lot of control. And it's, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of control that, that is used in a good way. When you're watching people sometimes coming in there, you don't know what they done been through, but then you're watching them laugh and you're watching them just chuckle and having a good time. And then you find out afterwards, hey man, I just came back from a friend of mine's weight. I really appreciate you putting me in the right. better mood. Wow. Hey man, I just, you know, I just found out, man, if I don't come up with this money, they're going to kick me and my family out. Thank you for they letting me They told me that last week. <laughs> hello, same family. Hello, hello. So man, it's fun. It's a way to, you know, try to get your point out, try to get people to see things a different way. Because laughter always lets people break their walls down so you can tell people something that you can't tell them when you're mad at them. Right. Well, you know, com black, black comedy is mad, though. Black, black right. comedy is pain and anger. So we are talking mad, nigga. You, you come you, out on the black stage too happy, you might not make it. <laughs> and you got a unique perspective of, of speaking of black comedy, of, of knowing the nuance, what that is. Black comedy versus uh, mainstream and or white comedy. Uh, talk to me about what the difference is. What are the nuances? Man, I always say a white club will let you tell a joke. Mm. Black club, if they sniff out it's a joke, you about to be in trouble. <laughs> you know, at a white club, you can come out there and say, hey, I was walking on Mars the other day, and they like, oh, it's a joke. Okay. Right. You better not come out no black club talking about, hey, I was on Mars the other day. Man, you wasn't on no Mars. Stop <laughs> lying. It's like you got to make it sound like you just talking and you happen to be funny. And that's what makes uh, being a black comic a lot stronger, in my opinion, because you have 
you have strong bits. It's a bit. It's something you don't worked out, but you really have to sell it as it's just a thought that you have. Wow. And we always we always trip on it. Mike Epps is one of the kings of just making you think it's off the top of his head until you've seen him five times. Yeah, very true. <laughs> hey, Cole, you got anything for Bone? No, nah, man, Bone is an amazing dude, man. Best of luck on the radio show, podcast, all that, brother. I, I can't wait to see all you're going to do. Cole, thank you, man. It's always good to see you, man. Always, you always a pleasure, man. <laughs> hey, 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 Bone, let me ask you this, man. Um, you're a comedian. We know that. Uh and what I what I love about you is that you are deliberately in the in the church space, but yeah. you don't sacrifice your funny to be in that space. Like how is it how is that you are able to do that this many years? Well, I believe that if no matter what kind of comedy you're doing, you should you should do comedy in all rooms and see what part of you connects with every different room. You know, we always say as comics, you know, funny is funny, but sometimes the content of where you're coming from might not be relatable. Well, then it's your job to figure out how to tell, tell that part of you that's funny to a group of people that may not be the went through what you went through. And so for me as a Christian comic, my job is to not make the ring, not make the room feel judged, make the room feel like, hey, man, it's just what I'm doing in my life. But I'm not trying to make you feel like you're wrong for doing it in your life. So I used to do a joke about, uh, you know, I want uh, when I get married, I want to be married forever. And it worked. It kills in the church because that's what everybody in the church trying to do. And one time I was at the ice house, dude slammed his drink. I'm like, man, what the F you want to do that for? <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, you know what? I'm a Christian and I'm tired of having sex and having the Lord mad at me the next day. <laughs> that's why I want to do it. And he looked at me like, oh, okay, that's you. That's how you trying to do it. Uh, it's personal it now. It's personal. Realize, right. You know, I need, I, I have to let you know where I'm coming from so you can be like, oh, that's your path. But you're not telling me that got to be my path. Right. Have you ever tried to do like a Jewish room and see if you can kill that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 hey, 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 Ball, I know you got your finger on the pulse of the Christian world. Kurt Franklin recently uh, came out. Well, not came out, but uh, he. Uh, <laughs> it's almost that time, though. Is it New Year, not, New Me? I'm not doing this with you. New right? Year, New Me. So, wait. <laughs> so, Kurt Franklin was getting one of those awards, I think a Dove Award. Dove Awards, yeah. Dove Award, and Dove is the Christian Grammys. Dove is the Christian Grammys. Okay. And they, they had a war for him, and he, he used the platform to say something political. Uh. And they end up cutting it out. Uh, long story short, it got to the point where they cut it out, and he's like, dude, why y'all cut it out? And they're like, oh, we mean to, don't worry about it, we, we'll fix it. You know. Right. And so he, the next time, <laughs> he got another war. Yeah. And they cut it out again. Oh. Yeah. And so now he's taking a stand do you think that stand is going to stay packed? Uh, is, is Kurt Franklin going to stay uh, um, firm on his decision not to mess with the uh, that part of the gospel world? Or it's not that's not gospel. That's Christian. That's Christian. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. Christian music world. Well, you say, well, well, it's a well, mixture. Well, I mean, hold on. Well. Give us the difference first, Bob. Right. I, I know a lot of people don't understand the difference between black Christians and white Christians. Give it to me. All right, so in the music world, the white Christian world, white folks call they, they they Christian music, Christian music. And in the black gospel world, we call it black gospel music, which is basically just a nice way of not having to say black and white all the time. All right. Army so black white. is gospel yeah. and Christian is white. It's white. Understood. So, so the Doves is more of a Christian award show, but they've been decent about being inclusive of inclu including the black right. gospel. So Kirk won gospel artist of the year both times he won an award. And he was just making a, a plea to the Christian world. I mean, and when I say Christian world, not black and white, but just the whole entire gospel Christian world of let's do better. And he and he acknowledged the, you know, the the wrongful killings of an innocent black man, unarmed black man. And that's what they didn't air. And he was like, no, nah, man, there's no reason for y'all not to air that. And they really didn't have a good reason for it. And that's what made him get to the point where he's like, no, nah, man, I'm just going to boycott because 
Y'all say y'all want to do better, but y'all not really trying to do better. So the question you asked me, if I think it'll stick, I really don't know. I would like for it to stick so it could be some changes, but I, I don't know, man. It's, it's uh, I don't know because, you know, the, one of the worst things being in the body of Christ that we can have is the is the divisiveness because, you know, we get divided and we're supposed to be the people coming with love then it's hard to be an example of how we all supposed to be coming together. But if you know the church broke, if you know that it's, it's wrong dealings going on in the, in, in the church, you're supposed to do something. You're supposed to stand up. You're supposed to not let the wrong dealings continue to go. And if it's anybody in this gospel world that can make a stance and make a change, it is Kirk Franklin. Hey, man, you broke it down. Hey, bro, I can't wow. thank you enough for coming on. How do people find you, man? Bonehampton.com, and then you can go to all my social media from there, catch my podcast, Bonehampton Loud and Country Podcast. Everything stems from Bonehampton.com. Hey, I love it, man, Bonehampton.com. That's the man, the myth, the legend. His name is Bonehampton. Uh, he had a heart attack. I had a stroke. We both still walk around. I might be the healthy friend. We, we hope it. <laughs> <laughs> Mine might be finite. I don't want to get in the finite bucket. You know, I've been in good down with measles. All I can see, though, don't eat me out. Who can call that? Get a different <laughs> like, you heard, you heard Cole, You heard Cole got rickets? <laughs> rickets. <laughs> Cole got rickets? <laughs> and it's take him out. Polio. Yeah. You know Cole got polio? Jaundice. <laughs> Diphtheria. <laughs> If Cole got polio, jeans are about to come back soon. <laughs> I got more polo than Cole anything. got the bubonic plague. <laughs> no. <laughs> bird flu. That's yeah, about that. Not the, the bird, bird flu. flu. I, I don't see me getting it. I don't hey, eat it. Hey, hey, you know what? Salmonella. I, mean, I don't. I don't eat it. You do not. <laughs> hey, that's my man Bone. Have to thank you for calling in, Bone. Hey, hey man, y'all, we gonna take a break. We come back uh, more with this fool right here, man. It's Roddy Perry. You do Roddy Perry a lot. You are always doing something, bro. Yeah. Like, well, you be I, busy. I, I read this, um, I read something, you know, I always read tweets, wise tweets, you know what I mean? I read something that uh, uh, Russell Simmons said. He said, the way to create a demand is to always stay busy. Absolutely. That way people gotta pay for the time. You know what I mean? So I, I adapted that and I just, I just use it all the time. Like, you know, uh, this is my intern right here, Jalen. He'll tell you from thing to dawn. I mean, we at it. You know what I mean? We getting to it. We, we running around. We uh, dropping off packages, mailing packages, doing interviews. Um, I mean, just all of it. Just whatever. Just keep it popping all day. Hey y'all, we are back in full effect. I'm Rodney Perry. You do the Rodney Perry live. This man is stupid, man. Cole uh, Parker here. What's going on, Cole Papi? Cole Parker's in the building. Uh, uh, entrepreneur, divas in defense. Talk to me about the business, man, and what it is. I had a chance to go watch. Um, what a class! Watch you at work, man, yeah. and I was really impressed, dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. Well, first I mean, of all, you... this first of all, this is my friend. Yes, <laughs> this is my friend. <laughs> But I don't be going to no no female kickboxing camp. Definitely not that many. But I took my I took my daughter mm -hmm. to participate. She thoroughly loved it. She be trying to do moves on me at the house. I love it. <laughs> and um, you are single handedly empowering our women, man. Talk to me about the brainchild and how y'all came up with you and your brother. Well, my brother and I did start it ten years ago now, bro. It's been ten years. A decade. A decade in. Wow. This year, and um. 
We just started because we grew up in a house where we witnessed domestic violence firsthand, you know, and, and you, as growing up, when you witnessed it, it's either you promulgate it by doing the exact same thing, continue it, or you become an advocate against it. You know, fortunately, us as current husbands and, and fathers of girls um, and boys, in my case, you, you want to be better, so you want to make sure that you empower them to be so much better. And the fact that you could just reach hundreds of thousands of women in, in, in the same climb to empower them as well is only a God-given gift. Wow. Yeah. So, so uh, what is Divas in Defense? Well, man, you know, Divas in Defense is a self-defense system um, based on empowerment and confidence building. Uh, we've been around except for 10 years. Girls as young as four, we have different programs from Princess Karate that we do in some schools, uh, Fierce Girls, which is for our young girls, K through five. We have Find Your Power in middle school, On Her Own high school, kick some cocktails for the woman to have in, in the home with their girlfriends. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So you can kick somebody and be drunk at the same time? It's more like kicks then cocktails, like the sign then drive thing. Okay. But there's, been a, there's been a group that kind of ruined it for everybody else, though. They messed it up. Oh, my gosh. They broke the lady nose and everything. No! Oh, my gosh. Another story. Okay. But uh, that's, it got a lot of now, now, you, now, you get some, some real life questions. After I saw it, I was like, Cole, you know, I asked you, I was like, yeah. is this giving women a false sense of security? What do you say to that? I said, no. If you, if you, once you leave my class, one thing we both know, you can hurt someone. And if you can hurt someone, you can defend yourself. You can defend yourself, you can go home safely. And so you're less, less likely to be attacked absolutely. if you, if your you have a, Your confidence is different. Your confidence is different. Your walk is different. Interesting. And, and you know, listen to all my, stay off your phones, one headphone in your ear, you know, have your keys in your hand, get in your car, drive off, lock the door when you get in there, lock the door when you get up. You just heard this. So that walk to the car, it's almost like I wish a mofo would, you know. I, Got it. I, I, I really, not that I'm looking forward to one day somebody challenge it, but. <laughs> you, want, you want to see. I mean, you know, see, I can do applicable uh, so, information so, at the time. So wait, so so you got you got all these, you're empowering these women. Yes, sir. You are, um, is there any any move to do devos in defense? <laughs> okay, so all the moves are practical yet tactical. Okay. No, 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 I'm saying for little boys. Right, right. That all, all the moves so, are practical yet tactical. Okay. I mean, they can be used. It's, it's, but not, it's, it doesn't not, it's matter. not just It's a not gender thing. specific. And, that and, just happens to be our demographic. Got it. Reason got being, it. little boys are not as intimidated going to like a martial arts school. Interesting. Young girls sometimes are the only one or one of the only ones, and all the boys challenge her, and it can be. Um, you know, a, a little a little headache for them. So we just give them a place that they can come and be comfortable, Got be it. empowered, and be themselves. And what's the youngest girl? Four years old. Four years old. We started for kindergarten. Okay, four years old, kindergarten. You come and be a part of the class. That's it. And um, uh, you do some fun stuff, man. I like to have, man, you know, we friends, man. Yeah. You know, you that's one fun. thing I would say to brothers is the fact that we both love life. Yeah. You know, we love life and we love people, man. And when you have that, it makes everything else easy. So the classes I do, I can say, you know, might be a little bit more comedic than, than right. most of my trainers. Uh, shout out to Vanessa Fraction, who's probably even funnier Vanessa, than I am. Vanessa Fraction, stand-up comedian. She's one of your trainers that now. That she is. So, and, and that's another part of your business. She does people, kicks and comedy. People can be become... Uh, they can do what you're doing to their, their own group of people. They can be certified in our system to go out and teach and empower women the same moves, the same information that we give. But we don't even make like if you already How have. How long a business does it take to it? learn? Is it a course? Is it, is it yeah, written? It's, it's paper? online, in person, you name it, and okay. and it's a uh, it's an electronic test to it also. Um, I would say ideally four four to six weeks if somebody puts some focus in it. Right. But we have some people who've done it. And faster. it's your own business at that point. It's your, it is the, exactly that. It is your own business. Wow. Your wow, deepest in the fence where you are. That's yeah. dope. And you got trainers like that all over the country. We even have one in Bermuda, brother. So yes. Bermuda. Oh yeah. Shout out to Levi. In the Triangle. Oh boy, let me so tell you. So we don't even know where she at right you, now. First of all, she knows where she is. You can go over there, mess with if you want. <laughs> She's you also a nurse. So that. even those with full time jobs. Do it because they also want to give back to the world. Okay. Nothing wrong with getting a little bit of money for it as you grow. Wow, dude, yeah. dude, I'm I'm a fan, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm really a fan. You my boy. Uh, I appreciate the love. What else is coming down the pipe, man, for Divas in Defense and for you personally? Gotcha. So this is Personal Self Defense Awareness Month. January is. You, you know what? 
Every month you tell me something that I didn't have no, no idea. No problem. About. I got a few up right now. It's personal. also Personal Self Defense Awareness Month. Okay. Human Trafficking Prevention and Awareness Month. Which which uh, Atlanta, Georgia is one of the one of the top places. Well, top in the world. Wow. Not just in the nation, in the world. Wow. Um, then you have February Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Uh, March is Women's um, History Month, and then April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So. You know, we're kind of busy. We do a few things. We got a, a, a mom and me it's class hot, coming up. It's a hot time. It's that time. <laughs> Boy, I got to put more. Got to get them hours in now. But uh, we have a, a mom and me class coming up the, the 11th, uh, which is Saturday in Smyrna. We also have on the 25th a class that is sponsored by TrapRecruiter.com. It's a young lady I've been knowing for what, quite what a while. What kind of recruiter? Trap Recruiter. Trap, T R A P. Yeah, that is correct. So, like, any dr you would think you want to be a drug. No, I'm just teasing, man. That's a lie. You see what she does? That's just a, that's just her catchphrase. If you want to be a drug, then list the business how. That's a lie. Trap. Show you how to work the trap. <laughs> trap recruit. She's gonna be so mad at me about this. But no, her name is Kirsten, and uh, she actually uh, HR guru. She knows the, the ins and outs, the highs and lows, the connection between the two, and she's actually sponsoring the class out of Maryland, and um, she's going to she's going to do it. And uh, she's going to have it here in Atlanta. So, you know, yeah. we're excited about it. So that's a free class at Athleta in Atlantic Station. Point your camera at the TV. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? Going to help us hard to find. No, I just got bad <laughs> signals. My signals is horrible. Well, first of all, she's about to talk about me for saying that. Who you calling bad help? <laughs> no, I'm you just know? saying if, if you're going to shoot nuts, you just going to get the blue screen. Right. But if you shoot a TV, then you get. You get what's going on. That, I would agree right stuff. now. You get what's going but, uh, on. That's Candy. She's producing. Oh, this, this is for me. oh. see? Oh, you lied? Yeah. Oh, What's shit. up, Candy people? So we done oh. ruined the whole show now. I know. We just <laughs> definitely stopped. <laughs> hey, I tell you what. Let's take a break. We come back. More of the show. Uh, I'm with my man, Cole Parker. We got more guests coming in. It's Roddy Perry. You tuned in to Roddy Perry Live. Everybody just stop what you're doing. Hey there, how you doing? What's up? Everybody on your feet, get up. Good laughs, good people, good vibes. Get ready, cause it's about that time. So clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Lap it up, lap it up, lap it up. Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Lap it up, lap it up, lap it up. Everybody get Everybody get ready. Everybody get ready. Everybody get ready. Oh, the this is all the chain. This show is all the chain. All, all the chain. This show is all the chain. All the chain. All the chain. Rodney Perry is all the chain. You want to see me do my thing. Huh? What up, everybody? Oh. My name is Rodney Perry, and my new home, Status Network. I'm talking about Rodney Perry Live is going to be live than it's ever been. It's going to be me, you, and the rest of the world right here getting our status on. Status Network, Rodney Perry, a partnership like no other partnership. i see y'all at the show. <laughs> yeah, crazy outtake. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at that. I'm looking there. So I'm right there in the middle. Okay. I'm taking it to another level. This is interactive to its highest. Shit. Stop it. Stop it. Let me start over. I 
this show is going to be live, interactive. It's Rodney Perry live, but it's super duper live. We live than we ever been before. Let me tell you something. I got a damn bell. I'm sorry. Let's Perry. It's a status network, a partnership to break all partnerships. Where you at? We live. Ladies and gentlemen, from LA to New York, New Chicago, York, Chicago to Mississippi, Mississippi, let's give it up for America's number one funny man, Rodney. What up, y'all? It's your boy Rodney Perry. Hey, slide this, slide. Come here. Yeah, there we go. Hey, in the building, show some love. If you uh, if you pop around social media, you've seen this dude. Uh, one of my favorite comedians. I don't think I never, never even told him that. Um, stupid. In a good way. In a great way. Oh. <laughs> um, and um, just a, a really a quality human being at the same time. Uh, we was uh, together this weekend at Harvard, Connect Harvard Connecticut, um, and we had a great weekend all night, and I really enjoyed watching this comedy. Uh, in the studio with me right now, Mr. Navigate. What's up, Nav Green? I do my own clap. What's up, RP? Hey, man, thank you. First of all, thanks for coming down, man. Oh, man, this is dope. This is dope. You like it? Yeah, I like it. It's cool. Okay. You got you a theme song and all. You heard what's yeah. up? Yeah. You heard what's up? <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. Hey, man. Uh, first of all, Nav Green. First of all, Nav Green is wearing my jacket. Let me go on record. So I, I think I want it back. <laughs> <laughs> it look good. Like, well, it, did, it, look, it do look kind of black. <laughs> and I can't zip it. <laughs> so it's good to see it zip. <laughs> see it zip. See it a different way. Man, different that should look amazing. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, look I amazing. swear that. I swear it like that one. Yeah. Anyway, um, Nav Green, uh, what, how, how did you get bit by the comedy bug, man? Uh, I, I always like uh, doing, com uh, well, I won't say doing comedy mm -hmm. in class, but you know, like just making the whole class laugh. Okay. Like that was, like it was a big high for me, like when the. It get quiet. So you was in you was in high school. I started probably in middle school. Like really trying to really like. So you was deliberately trying to make people laugh, and then you was seeing results. Right. How how did you know? What made you aware of stand up comedy though? Well, you know, like during like when I was coming up in middle school, they had so many shows like Comic View. Wow. So you know I was seeing. So you that. watched us. Yeah. So I was oh, wow. seeing that at night. It would come on. 11, 10, okay, 11. Okay, so I'm watching yeah. every night. Then around high school, um, around high school, I just, uh, it, they had the Your Mama auditions. It was, it had came okay. from Atlanta. Yeah, because I remember, um, uh, what's it, my man, it was from here. Um, uh, I became aware of him then. Hell no. Johansay. Johansay yeah, was we, on that show. Me and Johansay, we battled each other in the best of the week. Okay. And, uh, I, I had won. I had won. I won my episode one best of the week. And uh, I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with E-Man Funny. Uh-huh. I remember him. Yeah, he ended up winning the whole thing. Okay. But that's when, that, I, I wasn't even supposed to be on the show. I'm, okay. You had to be 18 to be on the show or either. How old were you at the time? 17. I had just turned 17. Get out of here. You were 17 years old. Yeah. And you you got, you you on television. Yeah. You got to be like, I'm about to, my life about to change. And that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought somebody was gonna be watching your mom. Like, man, who is this? We right. need him. So it I'm just happened. sitting back and waiting. And it didn't. It didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> but so. how I got caught, they uh, they find end up finding out my real age because you know you have guests come. So right. the people that's coming for me, they put they real like they weren't the smart. Like, I always was the smartest <laughs> out of my, you know, my. You need some new friends. Yeah. <laughs> so they put they real date of birth ah. down. So they were like, why he got all these young ass yeah. friends? <laughs> Wow. It came out. Okay, so you couldn't have won no way. You couldn't no, have won no. because of your age. Well, actually, after that, they they had got in contact with my parents. They were like, "We need you to sign these waivers because 
He already won one show, and right? He's about to win oh, this it, one, so it, we it. need, so it can't. We, yeah, no, we need. No, E-Man, E-Man whooped whoop me fair and square. He whooped me fair and square? Yeah, he had more jokes than me. He just kept right, going. Right, right, right. I wasn't following the guidelines. I just see somebody and joke. You had to have different topics to joke on, like oh. make uh, city-related jokes. He had material. Yeah, I didn't have no material. I'm just. Okay, okay. <laughs> you just off the dome. Right. And, but that, but that's, a, that's a gift in itself. So how often do you feel like your muscle to do that is still strong? Cause yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like you know, crowd work and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, it ain't yeah. nothing but a thing. Yeah, nothing but. Now, now, what, watching you do do your do your thing, like, what, and what I like about you, you ain't never mean. Like, like cats that like like talk about people and they be mean to me. That just puts a a funky little air in the room. Like you will get somebody, and if they ask for it, you'll really give it to right, them. Right. Yeah. But you ain't I don't did, go looking for you it. ain't looking for nothing to just like rip somebody completely. Cause that's straight. why people be so like I don't want to sit in the front. Like what comedy kind of shows you go to? They just talk about the people. You know, <laughs> right? You make observation what you may have on, but just for that's your just, fault. Yeah, <laughs> that's your fault. We're just ripping a person apart. No, hey man, I, I saw a video you posted. Uh, I guess it was today. Uh, the shift leader uh, talk to me about this character first of all. How did you create the shift leader, man? Man, they um, well, well, and actually, I had did a a little skit on IG. It was ICDC, so yeah. I was like, after they do uh graduate from ICDC, what how they would they be a shift leader at McDonald's? So that's <laughs> it. But then people was laughing at that. So Ratchet People Meet had started, and they was like looking for characters. So I was like, I'm gonna make my character the shift leader. Right. So I did one, one or two of the skits, and it just went crazy. They was so then people started sending ideas like. Maybe what if he do this? Maybe if he do that. So okay. I just expand. So, so, so uh, can I talk to the shift leader? Yeah. What, what, what okay. Would, I, I mean, I you know, I just. You know. <laughs> what would you say to her? Like, what would I you want, answer? First of all, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got the shift leader on here. What's up, shift leader? <clears throat> What's going on, man? Make it brief. <laughs> well, break it brief. Well, I heard, I heard you was up for a promotion, man. Um, What's the deal? Are you excited about it? Well, well, the thing with that, I denied it. I mean, why would you deny promotion? It's more money, more more influence. See, and that's that's the wrong mindset. I don't do it for the money. Is that right? Yeah. So when I, when you set your dreams, now I'm living someone else's dream. I always wanted to be a shift leader from the start. So you you where you want to be right, right now? Right. So I achieved my dream so early. Like anything else, I'm living somebody else's dream. You ain't trying to do that. Yeah, I'm closer to the people. I don't want no office where I can't see customers come through. You know, I can't jump over the counter and attack somebody when they put Sprite in a water cup. I wait, like to wait be hands on. You would, you would jump over the counter and attack somebody for putting... It, it depends on... I, I look and I test their speed. If they look like they can run quick, I jump over the counter. Okay. But if I got time to walk around... Take your time. I'm taking my time. Okay. Um, I understand that you can... Um, you know exactly how many fries go in the um, in the container. Yeah, I can eyeball the I can eyeball the pouch. How? Well, if everybody could do it, you would be a shift leader, right, and pair. Wow. So it's like it's some certain stuff you can't why, teach. Why, why you had to look me up and down like that? Because I was seeing maybe maybe I could train you, <laughs> but nah. So wait, wait. So wait. Let me ask you this, shift leader. Um, <laughs> shift leader is retarded. Um, so you're a ship leader. You don't want to go no higher than that. Have you ever been demoted? Demoted? Yeah, like taken down from the ship leader position. <laughs> no, it's like I don't. I don't understand. Like it's it's different. It's different avenues and aspects to how you look at life. But I can't be promoted or demoted. I'm just not no regular ship leader. I'm thinking about branching off and starting my own ship leader. Fleets of restaurants. Is that right? And they'll be called shift leaders. So, I like all the work I put in for McDonald's, and they still got Ronald McDonald. The clown. Yeah, you got a clown. Wow. That's a bad representation all of the work, work I put all in. All the work you put in. Wow, that's crazy. And uh, the quarter pounder. I heard. I heard you can. Um, you you can you can weigh that just just by looking at it. Yeah, and see, I got pulled over by a police before, and he sees scales in my truck. So now they <laughs> tear my stuff up. They got dogs all around my right. car, but they're not knowing I really weigh the quarter pounder. I make sure I don't cheat nobody oh, wow. an ounce. You don't want you don't want to do no, that. No, I make sure not, you get all your leader. beef. 
All the beef. Yeah, so that's what I'm weighing on the scale. I tell y'all what, let's take a break. I'm going to let Shipley to get the hell out of here, and we're going to come back with Nav Green and talk about what he got going on. It's Roddy Perry. You two. <laughs> See, when I get in that mode, it's hard. It's, it's you hard. can't get out of yeah, it. I can't get out hey, of it. Hey, it's Roddy Perry. What up, Roddy Perry Live. My name is Roddy right. Perry, and my new home, Status Network. I'm talking about Roddy Perry Live is going to be live than it's ever been. It's going to be me, you, and the rest of the world right here getting our status on. Status Network, Roddy Perry, a partnership like no other partnership. I see y'all at the show. <laughs> yeah, crazy outtake. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at that. I'm looking there. So I'm right there in the middle. Okay. I'm taking it to another level. This is interactive to its highest. Shit. Stop it. Stop it. Let me start over. My show is going to be live, interactive. It's Roddy Perry live, but it's super duper live. We live than we ever been before. Let me tell you something. I got a damn bell. I'm sorry. Let's Status Network, a partnership to break all partnerships. Where you at? We live. Hey, y'all, we're back in the building. Uh, one of my friends, man, Mr. Nav Green. Nav Green, take me to the moment you found out that you was going to be in Coming to America too. You tell me your moment, I'll tell you mine. Man, it, it, like when you say it, you saw how, the, like, how I smiled so yeah, fast, yeah, yeah. man. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Well, well, let me say this before we go. Um, there's a film coming out, Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, great cast of people, uh, and Nav Green and myself got to, got to be a part of it, and we're actually family members yeah. in the film. Uh, the movie is coming to America, too. It'll be out December 18th. You know all the information way before Man, me. I'm telling you, I, I, every day I wake up, I Google. I, you try to pass yeah, up? make sure. Um, so when you find out, man, you got the word. We we auditioned on the same day. Right. Matter of fact, I think I went in. You went in right after me or right before me. Right after you. And so and so we booked these roles in this film, man. You get the word. We audition. We audition. It's a it's thirty guys in there for if two roles, more. if not more. We didn't see everybody, and you get the call later that day or or that that weekend. You booked it. What, what, okay, where got, were you? And uh, how did you feel? I gotta start from the beginning. I gotta be honest. When I did see you, I was a little upset. Okay. Because I'm I'm looking around the room, the, the casting room. Everybody, they in shape. They it build, was a buff they dudes tall. in there. I was like, now if they looking for somebody short and stubby. I, I got it. It's a lockdown. And guess who walks in? <laughs> Me. You. I said, this man got the credit. Short and stubby. He's shorter <laughs> and stubby. Hilarious. I said, I said, man, I'm dead to rights. <laughs> Unless they need two short and stubby. <laughs> they, and, and they need it. Two short and stubby. That look like family. Because you can like easily be a member of my family. Right. Or vice versa. Right. So then, but the first time uh, I received the call, they was like, uh, they was ju we just trying. They're just trying to see if you're available during these those dates. I said, well, if I'm not, I am. Like this song, yeah, I'm, I, not I, I'm, never, I'm not gonna be not available. Yeah, yeah. So okay, they was like, that doesn't mean you ha have it though. I was like, okay. So then the next week they called back and they was like, uh, congratulations, uh, you booked the role. And I just got, I just got silent. I was wow. Like, Cause I I didn't even know how to feel at the time because it was it was so many roles I had got passed. And did you on know? That year. Did you know it was coming to? Oh, talk to me about that because you had went out for other things that right. you was excited about that they could have happened and yeah. made a difference, and that stuff didn't happen. But you you kept going, you kept pushing through. Talk to me about pushing through, man. man well, one thing, uh, and then I was even when we were on set, I forgot uh, who we was talking to, and then. Um, when uh, I was telling, I think Tracy was back there with us, and I was telling him like some of the stuff that I felt like I was passed on, and, and it had me down. And then he was like, "You, you know what movies you're talking about? And look where you at now. Like it, it makes it like you, wow. we were complaining about something. I mean, but you don't know till you know. Yeah, you don't know till you, you know. Till you I don't know. know that I was complaining like, or oh, it was gonna be a bigger picture. And, and it and it changed your perspective on everything. Now you go, okay, let me just be patient because what I don't know is what's coming up the road. Right. And uh, so, uh, like, for me, all I saw in the paperwork was Quest. Mm -hmm. So the, the movie had a working title called The Quest. And so it wasn't coming to America to me. 
I wasn't going in for cover. I didn't know. Oh, you didn't know at all. I didn't know. Oh. I mean, I know I was going in to to meet George Pierre, great cast director. Oh man. And I know he always get dope projects, but I did not know it's coming to America. So when I got the call and she said you booked the quest, I'm like, all right. She said, Ronnie, you don't sound excited enough. I'm like, I was like, what you mean? It's the quest. You know? <laughs> it's the quest. It's family. What is the quest? The whole thing was like a family. So I'm like. I mean, you know, whatever. You know, I'm gonna go in and kill it. We gonna, you know, we gonna get this little check, get all that. She's like, dude, that's coming to America too. Now everything changed. Stood in my kitchen. What? Well, well, so I got the word. I was kind of shocked. Mm -hmm. I, my wife had just came home uh, with my my daughter, and I was like, man, come here. She's like, what's up? She just looked at me. She's like, you all right? I was like, yeah, I'm cool, I'm cool. Um, so I just booked coming to America. She's like, no, you didn't. I was like, yes, I did. And I just put my head down, cried like a little man, baby. Man, yeah, like, it, it's a like a little baby, dude. Man, I first, when I first told my dad. What Pop said? He called me an MF liar. <laughs> <laughs> Pop! He ain't even, he ain't even, he said, you, you an MF liar. Right, he right. Said, I showed him the email. I said, man, don't tell nobody because I'm trying to, you know, he keep told it everybody. Right. <laughs> I don't know how soon or how quick, but the family knew. They knew immediately. They they knew. Wow. So you get on the set, man. You know, we got on there the first day. Yeah. I didn't I didn't think we were gonna see Eddie. I dude. You I, saw Eddie at rehearsal though. You remember? When we, we went over, we went to rehearse. That first yeah, thing he went yeah, to yeah, yeah, true that. And we true turned that. around and he walked in. Yeah, true that, true that. And, and I knew he was supposed to walk in the scene, but everything I heard about Eddie is that if he wasn't, the camera wasn't on him, that he wasn't in the scene, he, he'd have a double. Right. And I know his double. Mm -hmm. And his double was there and he was dressed. And I was like, I was like, I don't think we're going to see Eddie. Right. And then Eddie came in the scene and then he started giving like direction and stuff for yeah. us. And because we didn't have no lines the first yeah. day. And he, but, he was like, I think they should let everybody talk. Like, I was like, man, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> he a cool dude, though. It's like, it's like, it's a mystery to him. Like, he just so cool and chill, and he don't mind seeing other people win. That's what it's like. That's what it seemed like to me, yeah. too, man. It's like, he really seemed like he was playing the king in this movie, but he really seemed like a regal dude. Right. What's your takeaway from this film, man? What did you learn on the set? Man. I don't know. I think I think more so of the the downtime when we were having hearing stories. Like I think Arsenio Hall, he probably was the best storyteller I ever been around. Like some of the stuff he was telling us that I wouldn't. You know, you might hear in interviews, but he was giving us like first person narrative of yeah. what he saw. Uh, and and really on some on some like people he was the people he was talking about. You like wait a minute? Did he just say that yeah. name? Yeah. Whoa. And like he yeah. he'll sit there and just sit there and chop it up with us and talk with us. And I think Arsenio he made it you know more comfortable talking to him. Like Eddie, you still starstruck. He, he was if, still approachable. Yeah. Arsenio was definitely approachable. Yeah, because Eddie walked over and talked to you, and you remember I was like, did you realize he was talking to you? And you like, dude, I was really and, and I met Eddie Murphy before. I've been to Eddie Murphy's house to like parties and stuff, but for him to walk up and go, hey Rodney, Rodney, man, how you doing today? I was like. Like, like, but, you know, Eddie. And I felt like I was kind of dissing him. And I, that's why that's why I said, because you were just talking. You were just talking and laughing. Then he come over there and you was like, I was he like, like, he I was like, like really how you doing? Right? He was like, uh, yeah, what's up, man? Like, like, he, like, he, like, like he owed me some money. Yeah, that's what I'm like. <laughs> I was like, Rodney, Eddie just came over here and talked to you. He was like, yeah. yeah. I, so, I mean, hopefully I get comfortable enough around <laughs> to apologize. <laughs> He probably don't remember. He probably, he probably don't give a <laughs> shit. He probably don't. He probably ain't talked twice about this shit. You know. But so. then, like, we was on the same game plan. Like, anytime we needed to be in the scene, me and you were there. Oh, yeah. Like, before the shot was ready. Like, uh, we were there. You, we you ain't never had to look for us. You're number 30 and number 31. Hey, I so, wasn't going to So, be every here. movie is like this. People don't know at home. There's a call sheet, a sheet of paper. It have a, a breakdown. First of all, Eddie Murphy playing, like, eight characters. He won through eight. He won through eight. So it was 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I think Lunel was 29. Mm -hmm. You were 30. I was 30. You were 31. 31. And there was some people under you. Right. 
So hey, we we went at the end. Not not the shit on anybody. Rick Ross was under me. Rick Rick Ross is number thirty six. He, he, he got to step his game up. He, he got to get his shit together, Rick. <laughs> I'm just talking to you. <laughs> if you see this, Rick, I was just talking shit. No, no, fuck that. Rick, get your shit together. <laughs> number 36 on the call sheet. Just because we use your house don't mean your gas. Don't, just because your house got used don't mean you could motherfucker, get your, get your call sheet game together. It's only a... Oh, 30. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody scared of Rick Wall. I hey. actually, well, I felt myself a little, little nervous around him. For real? Yeah, cause you know he had a reputation. You don't know. I don't know what, and he be whispering and shit. Yeah, you know? he talk all like, chill and cool. I'm like, niggas, niggas, we just niggas, man. Just, we, we just cool. Anyway, but great experience, man. Uh, bigger and better things coming in the future, man. Man, I don't. But I, honestly, I have to. I have to be truthful. I don't know what could get bigger than this right now. It's gonna be a minute. Like this. Dude, this a highlight for me, man. This ain't our first movie together. Oh no! This this is actually our third one. It's our third. So we did that movie. But uh, you know, in the first two movies, me and you were never in the same scene. Never in the this same movie, scene. We, we had every, every scene. scene together. We had every scene together. Third so time. This is what we got to do next. Me and you got to do a movie. Our own movie. We got to do our own movie. We got to do our own movie. And like some, it got to it got to the title we, gonna throw people off. Buddy the cops movie. or some. No, just name it the fourth movie. Everybody the fourth be like, movie, like, we missed the other three. Yeah, you yeah, missed, what are you talking? Yeah. You missed all three of them. You know what? We need to start working on that damn green. Bring your characters in. You know, I we can do characters. We can do the whole thing, man. And we just had these do two dudes on the road, right? Like, on some, you know, some. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the story. We got to figure out something. It'll come to us. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, yeah, we got we, we know enough people to shoot it too. Cause we can shoot it right here in Atlanta. Yeah. You know, just dudes on a wild. You know, whoever's number 30 and 31 on that call sheet, we're going to treat you like kings or queens, like whatever you are. That's your lucky number. Yeah, that's, that's the if lucky number. If you happen number. to be 31 or 30, Woo. we got you. I'm rocking with you. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey, I got to get ready to get out of here. That's our show for the day. Thank you to Nav Green. I appreciate Green. you having me. Hey, man, I can't, I can't tell you that much. Uh, I enjoy being around you. You're a cool dude. He travels with me on the road as well. One of the best people you could Fabulous be in Madden. Comedian. One of the best people you could be in Madden, man. I, I ain't want to slide that in. I know we had 30 seconds left. I had to just throw that out of there, and then, you know, we could just, you know, go out. Well, actually, <laughs> I wanted to last, like, three games. But, you know, that's not what. <laughs> hey, let's get out of here. Roddy Perry, winner. And um, let's, that, that guy, Nav Green, got his ass toe up I, in Columbus, South Carolina. Hey, let's get out of here. That's our show for the day. Nav Green, fabulous comedian. Oh, man, thank you. Worst band player you ever. <laughs> no, I'm joking. He's, he's really, really pretty good. I stole, I stole your play.